Okay, so here's where students start. Um, they have this unit called Earth as a Puzzle. They know they're going to figure out stuff about the Earth. Um, we have a period of asking questions and pondering and wondering and sharing out what we know, um, kind of an early brainstorming. And then they start doing investigations or stations. The very first one um, has a bunch of different colored liquids that are actually different materials. Um, and they are asked just to make as many layers as they can in test tubes with these liquids. And they're all different colors, so they can make colorful layered liquids in test tubes, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. My challenge is just how many layers can you make? Make as many as you can make. Um, and students do a bunch of layering and discover all kinds of stuff along the way about layering. Um, and then after the experiment, um, they're data taking, note taking, they have to write uh, full materials and methods and all these different um, processes. They have to write a results and discussion explaining their theory as to what's going on after they've done their write-up of the lab, basically. We gather together in a group and we have what I call consensus discussion. And they're sharing out ideas. I'm calling on them. It's like a guided discovery in the sense that I'm pulling on student ideas and um, kind of highlighting the ones that I want students to kind of contemplate and build on. So eventually students figure out that actually some of these liquids must be, or they theorize that some of these liquids must be more dense than others. That's why they're below. They theorize about how gravity is pulling on the more dense liquids um, it, with uh, more force than it's pulling on the less dense liquids. And so the, it's the more dense liquids that are actually supporting or um, holding the less de dense liquids up. Um, and so they, again, have these discoveries about density, about layering, about gravity, um, and lots of theory building. And then we do the next station. And the next station asks for them to try and layer three different temperatures of water. Now, they all have to food coloring in them, different food coloring, so you can tell which is which. So there's cold water, and there's room temperature water, and there's hot water. And they have to try and make um, three layers. And it's definitely a challenge, and it takes them a while to figure it out. But eventually, by the end of the period, all the groups have made at least a layer with two of them, if not all three. And then they, you know, again, they take all their data down. They write down their observations, materials, and methods. And then they go home, and they write a results and discussion, detailing their theories about what's going on. And then we come back into class and have our consensus discussion, what's going on. Um, through the process of the discussion, some students will say, well, you know, that hot liquid, since it layered above where the colder liquids, like the only way they could get it to layer was when they put the colder liquids on the bottom, be it the room temperature under the hot or the cold under the room or the cold under the hot, but that was kind of how it layered out. So they uh, eventually they um, theorize that this must have to do with density, that the hotter liquid must be less dense than the colder liquid. Um, and then they'll go into all kinds of theory building about what the heat is doing to the molecules and the molecular movement and how that is affecting the density, um, about the molecules bumping into each other, um, and all this activity. And so they come up with this great theory about why the uh, hot liquid is, in fact, less dense than the cold liquid. So then, after that, um, they do another station where there are um, two flasks, one with a hot liquid and one with a cold liquid, and again, the food coloring. And they have to invert one of the flasks on top of the other with a playing card and pull the playing card out, much like um, you see magicians pull out the tablecloth underneath the plates and cups and stuff. And what they find is that if they've placed the cold liquid on the top and pulled out the card, that they can actively see that cold liquid like sinking down and pushing the hot liquid up and they can see the currents in the colors. Um, they can actually see the convection. Whereas if they've put the hot liquid on the top, they really don't see anything and the colors stay separated until the next day. So again, results in discussion, observations, theories, come back to class, then we talk about what's going on and through that process, they're able to say, um, what's happening. In other words, they're able to explain the root or causes behind convection itself. So go through all this process. All this is physics, right? 
We have another station where they're uh, actually calculating the densities of liquids and solids, so they really have a solid understanding of what density is. Um, and then we kind of branch into the earth science part of it. Um, so I'm going to describe the earth science part of it um, in, a, in an additional um, audio, and I'll explain how um, they're connecting the ideas from the physics part um, to the earth science part within the unit. 